We've had a really tremendous discussion these last two days about how to adapt our traditional advertising messages into this world of multi-touch, multi-platform communication stream where it's about content and it's about context. Yesterday, we focused on how to have, how to tell a story, how to deliver meaningful content one-to-one -one at a scale that matters to your brand. Today, we shifted our focus to the data and technology behind the delivery of these messages. Unfortunately, with the technological advances comes a caution. Despite what we've heard earlier, there is not an unlimited supply of online inventory. And if we really want to believe that every single audience can scale to our desires, we're fooling ourselves. And why is it, though, if I, as an advertiser, have money to spend, there is inventory to buy and an audience to be had? Well, welcome to the world of online ad fraud. If you're a big headline follower, where you see all of the dire predictions of how much of our money is wasted, the landscape looks like this. If, on the other hand, that's only for people who spend all of their money in DSPs and retargeting and junk inventory, your world looks like that. The reality is a little different. But too often, when we start talking about online ad fraud, we get diverted into meaningful issues that, frankly, are more about ad quality than about ad fraud. Clutter, collision, and the 2015 poster child, viewability. I'm going to suggest to you those aren't our real problem, or at least they're the most controllable part of the problem. So let's cover those off quickly and then dive a little deeper into online ad fraud itself. So clutter, and congratulations to any of you who figure out what the question answer to my question was. It took me four or five ad cycles. 50 impressions, yay! Um, you have clutter primarily in retargeting of things of a site that is highly ranked on an organic search result, great vehicle for delivering ads. It does well for those who built it. For me as a consumer, it didn't really help my question. Um, you also have things of quality content for their audience. College football blogs, I love them and I hate them. They won't get any design reward awards from me but they certainly engage the audience I'm talking to and get a tremendous amount of time spent. Then we run into collision. Collision is simply multiple ads. This is actually a pretty good example in that there's only two from White House Black Market. Again, there's an entire shopper persona playing out on these ads, so you know, don't think less of me. Um, <laughs> but, Clutter comes down to either too many partners working against the same inventory or poorly managed timing and frequency caps. This certainly can be addressed in terms of inventory specifications in your RFPs and IOs. Viewability, or more like that viewability, again consumes us. Um, but I, as I'm going to share with you, there's a reason I think it's overblown in the focus. Although just obligatory, whether we agree with what the definition of a viewable ad is or if we think the MRC standard works, um, if you look at the rooms to go ad on your right, that one's viewable. The one on the left is not. Given in both cases, the hero image and the call to action are missing. I'm guessing rooms to go or me if it was mine or any one of us would say doesn't really cut it. But these three, while very important, I again maintain are about ad quality. The real issue I think we face is online ad fraud. Online ad fraud comes from a world of organized crime that is out hacking you, me, and grandma, not for our credit cards, not for our bank accounts, but for our online credentials, our cookies, our search history, our IP addresses. 
And it's also in using technology to create sites for our cloned selves to visit and view hundreds of thousands of ads that are never seen by a real human being. And unfortunately, today's cyber criminals a lot more like that alien than my favorite Looney Tunes character. So I had the opportunity as a member of the Association of National Advertisers Media Leadership Committee to participate in the baseline bot fraud study. This study was designed to really put some sort of actual, verifiable, controlled baseline to how big this problem is. This study had 36 national advertisers, hospitality, CPG, pharma, beer spirits, um, technology, the gamut of what really becomes the national advertising landscape. There were 181 campaigns in the campaign. 5.5 billion impressions were served, video and flash, as part of the campaign. Over 3 million domains. Interestingly enough, because you don't get credit for what you don't advertise, the a put out a press release in July that we were running this study in August. Even more conservative, I like that. Um, we did actually run through the originally planned time period of August into September. So, so overall, it was a 60-day study, 30 days published, 30 days not. Um, and within that, we found some fairly staggering items. Um, one, our bots are not only alive and well, they are controlled by actual entities. We saw a definitive drop in volume between July and August. And in September, as we hit the point in time where the, the study publication, what study was publicized to end, um, the activity spiked back up to a fairly significant level. But more than that, bots have better vi viewability statistics than humans. So when I'm running my campaign, on premium inventory as a direct buy with 100% viewability, that doesn't mean that I'm not paying for nothing, that I'm not handing my money over to someone who never did a thing to help my business. And they watch videos. In fact, the average across the study was that the bot traffic on banner ads was 11%. Video, particularly premium video, averaged 23%. So our bots are viewing video over two times more than they're viewing ads. And interestingly enough, depending on your player, I, had, I actually had a pretty significant name brand partner in my campaign um, that while they weren't 98% bots, they were over half bots. And had you asked me ahead of the study, was this one that would have bot activity I knew without a doubt it didn't. In fact, over half of the domains that found bot activity in the study are part of the Alexis 1000. And to add insult to injury, direct buy premium campaigns. While the average isn't too bad, I think it's 17%, in the campaigns themselves, the percentage of fraud ranged from 16 to 64%. So this was good. This one just uncovered last week. I got an email from my um, anti-fraud provider. Actually, my agency did, copied me, because he knew I was doing this and would like to see it. This is a real site serving hundreds of thousands of ad impressions a minute, all to bot traffic. I can only be a little happy that those aren't all my ads, but none of these are being seen by human eyes. In the course of five minutes, this site served over a million paid for impressions from a variety of advertisers, completely unknown to the individuals who computers it was running on. Um, so I'm off it. I don't know how far that they've come in shutting the, site, the provider itself down, but that's what happens when you take collision clutter viewability and throw it together with some really smart, smart hackers. Yeah. 
that's what happened to my head, too. <laughs> so what can we do about it? I'm going to give you five things. And the plan is, in the follow-up to the conference, that we'll email some of this out for you as well. But first, you have to throw out your assumptions. If you don't do retargeting, you're not safe. If you never buy across a, a DSP or a trading desk, you're not safe. If it's all controlled in your, in your um, ad, in your agency trading desk of their, their walled garden, you're not safe. We are all agencies, publishers, and brand victims of this crime. However, I'll submit to you that we as brands have got to lead this charge for a simple reason. It's our money. And like anything else, the activity goes where the money goes. Why is this such a big thing? Why is this starting to surface? Because those professional cyber criminals have found there is more money to be had in online ad fraud than there is in bank fraud, credit card fraud. Credit cards, apparently as a criminal, it's really hard to make a living stealing credit cards anymore. But there's no controls here. Um, one of the companies I work with is truly staffed by white hat hackers who have previously worked with the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, primarily on bank fraud and cyber, cyber crimes. But this is a big deal. But here's the thing. I believe, and we'll talk about this in a minute, agencies and publishers, for the most part, aren't looking to be bad guys. But if they're getting paid for what they're serving, where is the incentive to start to root it out and stop serving it? So some simple things you can do as you shoot off the email in the next 90 seconds. One is tell your partners you're hearing about this stuff. It's a little scary. What are they doing about it? For the, and if they tell you something like, oh, we got it covered, ask more questions. Um, bots are stupid, or not all bots. Some bots are stupid enough they can't tell time. Overwhelmingly, the percentages of bot activity still spike between midnight and 7. You would think that would have been stopped, but it's out there. So if you don't have to, if you don't have real sales metrics over that time period, think about pausing your campaigns. Publishers who don't want this activity, don't keep your sites um, built out for older browsers. Each version old a browser is exponentially increases the amount of bot traffic it gets because, quite frankly, they're just easier to clone than the new versions. Secondly, I'd say educate yourself. I recommend the ANA study as an excellent place to start. Um, you'll have multiple case studies across multiple industries. Um, you can either go to ANA.net um, or whiteops.com. Uh, both of them have it fairly prominently figured configured in their display. I also found a tremendous amount of interesting articles in Ad Exchanger. I actually just went on and on to adexchanger.com and searched for Fraud Watch. Uh, they have profiles of companies combating in this space. They have a really interesting, I think, debate in their op-ed pieces about is it a brand problem or is it a publisher problem. Um, and we could argue either way, but again, Publishers take my money, I spend my money. And have the conversations. As I said, talk to your partners. Let's not assume that our partners or our agency or our agency trading desk woke up and said, this is a great way to rip off my clients. Approach them as a partner, not as an angry victim. We have to create the space that it's OK for our publisher partners to acknowledge that they're victims of this too. That's the only way we get to a point where together, we're time together. Demand transparency, no walled gardens, no secret sauce, and partner, but verify. The truth is that you can't, without third party um, objective coding, identify this problem. I had one vendor tell me they didn't have ad fraud because they only served IP addresses that had performed purchases. I've bought a lot of things online, and, for, and, and I could today, without my knowledge, 
have bots running behind my browser and never see it. So put the language in your RFPs, put the language in your IOs, put the language in your contracts that you will pay for human traffic only, verified by a third party provider of your choice. Talk to all of your partners about how they're managing it. And most importantly, commit to spending your money on humans that you want to hear your, your carefully crafted story of your brand. Thank you.